is Colonel Simon Diggins, uh, OBE, retired uh, British Army Colonel and Defence Analyst. Um, Simon, thank you so much for joining uh, me. Now, I just want to, if I can, um, clarify this defensive uh, position of Israel, because a lot of people talk about the dome, we talk about David Sling, uh, Arrow 2 and 3, but a lot of people don't actually understand what that is. Some actually believing that there is a form of, of dome. So can you just talk us through this, I mean, this incredible defence system that Israel has had to put together? Actually, yes, good into. I mean, it's a very sophisticated system. Uh, part of it's been in place now uh, since 2006. And earlier versions were in place even before then. And it's a system of systems. So it's a combination of, of, of radar, other, other forms of intelligence giving an indication of early warning uh, take, taking place, and then missiles, uh, so anti missile missiles to actually block, deter, or destroy uh, incoming mo missiles uh, and drones. Uh, and it's then put together with a very sophisticated command and control system. Um, and it's capable of knocking out significant numbers of missiles simultaneously, which again indicates how sophisticated the system is. And, and David Sling, my understanding, is a sort of backup to the Iron Dome. It, it then gets the lower missiles that may be, uh, that are not ballistic, perhaps. Is that right? Um, I'm, I'm not entirely sure the, the, the technical details about David Sling. And I, I've always just took the two things as a sort of, as a, as a sort of theatre rare defence system. They call it theatre rare defence because it covers a whole area rather than being a, a small area. And it will have a combination of uh, air defence or anti-missile systems, which are ideally designed for particular sorts of weapons uh, at particular heights and, and, and ranges and indeed, and indeed speeds. And I think the key thing is it's a coordinated system. And that's really the key to an effective air defence. It's not just one element that's got to be in place, it's other elements as well. And, and what the Israelis have been able to perfect and now over many years is a combination of the two. And it, overall, the system has, has blocked many hundreds, if not thousands, mm. of missiles over the time of its existence. Yeah, the Arrow 2 and 3, I believe, do the, the, the very high uh, missiles that uh, that come down. So the combination of the three will protect them. It seems that it did protect them today. I, I mean, um, the Ayatollah is saying that 80% of the missiles hit their targets. We still don't know what those targets were, but Israel is saying that is not the case. Although anybody watching this this afternoon would have seen explosions, but apparently that can be explained again by this Iron Dome, a defence system, saying those that were going to just land in the desert, they just let go. They didn't waste time trying to shoot them down. Does that sound reasonable to you? Yeah, absolutely right and reasonable as well, because you, you, the, the system is effective, but it's not 100%. And so if you're going to make decisions about which missiles you're going to go for, you know, you're doing very rapid, and obviously they're using computers, AI, whatever, very rapid so a trajectory um, analysis, so they can see what, when the, the, the missile takes off. They see how it's flying through the through the through the through the air, and then where it's going to land. And if if the assessment is it's going to land in a place that actually is not of not of importance, they'll leave it. They'll just ignore it and just accept it's going to go off in the desert somewhere. And then concentrate the air defence systems and missile defence systems around uh, high value areas that need to be protected, whether it be air bases, government buildings, um, and, and things like that. So. Uh, there is an element of judgment in, in, put, in, put, in, put, in, put in place, most of which is effectively automatic. It's algorithmically driven. Uh, but obviously there's a human element in there as well, making those decisions. But it, it's a very sophisticated system. So the images that we're seeing there with the explosions, uh, clearly these, these missiles did make contact. Then they, they would be the ones that made contact with the ground in a place that, that, that was going to be OK for them to do that. Yeah, relatively speaking, but obviously, if you if you knock a missile off off track, bits of it are going to land somewhere, sure. yeah, and, and they, you know, and bits of it will end up in people's houses, um, suburbs, and er and areas like that. But the you know, what they try and do is ensure that those the missiles that were they can judge from the trajectory were going to hit high value targets. They're the ones that concentrate the defence on, in order to ensure they don't hit those high value targets, and then knock out the others. But I say in knocking some of those out, they will be diverted. Or, or, or pushed off course, or bits will bits will land as debris. I mean, you know, a, a as we saw in Jordan, actually on the border, that, yeah, that Jordan absolutely. took some hits. Yeah, yeah. A, a more benign example is when spacecraft or, or you know satellites fall out of the sky. You know, bits fall everywhere. You know, and the, the same thing basically happens here. If you not if you hit the out of the sky, you know, you're going to it won't just disappear. It doesn't vaporize. Bits will continue to fall, and some of those bits could land on people or land on places that people get to.
Uh, can I take you now to Keir Starmer's uh, statement um, where he, he, he made all the usual noises. I, I suspect that we were expecting him to say that he condemned it in the strongest words, stands by uh, Israel's right to defend itself, uh, deeply concerned that the region is on the brink. But I, I thought it was interesting, and maybe it's just me, but I thought it was interesting that he didn't say anything about British troops in the region and, and didn't say we were not involved in, in helping Israel with its defence because, uh, I mean, America has said that they did. I just wonder if we didn't, then he should have said we didn't. And if we did, maybe that's why he didn't. Yeah, I, I generally don't know the detail on, on, on that. And you, you're quite right. There may be some subtlety in there, which is, you know, you, you, you're right, you, you kind of picked up on. I know that there's a concern at the moment about trying to extract uh, British entitled personnel from, uh, from, from Lebanon as well for the moment. I know that the government's working very hard to try and do that. I understand the charter aircraft. And there just may be a little bit about not publicly saying everything we're doing in order to ensure that the, the movement of, of those people who we should be protecting takes place uh, uh, as quietly and, and as, as safely as, as it possibly can. So whilst we clearly are indicating that we will help Israel to defend itself against missile attacks, we won't necessarily want to brute that, that noise out uh, on the basis that we've also got this very delicate business of trying to extract I don't know how many thousands left. It was 10,000 about four days ago. Mm. I think it's down to about 5,000 now. 5,000 British citizens from from uh, Lebanon, which in the middle of a war is a very complex thing to try and do. So I think probably just to dial the rhetoric down and listen a little bit, perhaps just to help to... Uh, to, to ease that passage. I always listen for what they don't say, Simon. <laughs> I, think you're very, I think you're very wise. Yeah, actually. it's always <laughs> much you. more important than what they do say. Um, yeah. Listen, looking at, 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 at the, our troops in the region, we do have uh, bases in uh, the United Arab Emirates. Uh, that's uh, Donnelly Lines, is that right? Uh, we have the Navy, um, HMS uh, Jaffa in Bahrain. We've got a joint logistics in Oman. We've got troops in uh, non-combative troops in Iraq. Uh, we've also just sent a further 700 troops to Cyprus, which, as you and I both know, is a sort of launch pad for the UK forces into the Middle East. It always has been, and that's why we keep hold of it. Um, how significant will these troops be, and, and how much will they be drawn in, do you imagine, if this does well, escalate? Well, I think... We'll be trying to control our engagement and control our, our, our involvement. Um, certainly, I think that the, the troop reinforcements into Cyprus, as you know, are probably more directly linked to the possibility of the non-combatant evacuation operation out of, uh, out of, out of, out of Lebanon. But they are and conveniently in place, is what well, I'm saying. They are very convenient. They are yeah. very, it's a, it's a, it's a, and it's a very handy so, you know, fixed air base in, in, in the location. Yeah. You, you, can't, you can't not that. I can't imagine as we have any we'll have any particularly direct uh, direct role uh, in in any fighting that's that's ongoing, except for it when it comes down perhaps to protecting people, maybe helping to extract the embassy staff and everything that goes go, goes with that. That's not to say that our intelligence or our defence assets might not be might not be involved. Um, we have a clear interest in ensuring that that, uh, that Israel in its in its if you like its pure state in its stays is not defeated by by Iran and we've made it clear as we did in April that we will defend them from there that is not to say that we support everything that Israel's doing uh, and elsewhere both, both David Lowe and the foreign secretary and the prime minister along with the American sort of senior leadership have called for a ceasefire so we, you know we, we 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 continue to try and ride those two horses one is to ensure that uh, that uh, British interests and British personnel are are, are, are are safely evacuated um, and also saying that Israel will be defended but also but also the third element making sure that um, the message about ceasefire is, is, is heard I you know that's a very there, there's a lot of dynamics in there mm. a lot of dilemmas and things pulling in different directions uh, fr from that what people are actually hearing at the moment is probably what do we can do to make sure that that Iran's attacks on Israel uh, don't have the effect of, of that the Iranians want to do where that leads us in terms of the longer term strategic picture about trying to ensure there's some type of ceasefire and something looks like a humanitarian solution to what is now 
awful crisis in uh, in the Middle East, I think is is very much on the on the back burner. And yet the RAF, we do have the RAF in Donnelly Lines. Uh, could they be called in? Have they got the capacity to be called in? Uh, they, I think that they, what they've, they've actually got is is, is there. I, I I said the other thing I would say the Emirates is extremely close to uh, to Iran and Iranian airspace. So I think people are thinking very hard about how how they might be how they might be might, might be used. When the effort was put out in, in April, it was very much a big coalition effort. They're not just the, the British and the Americans, but there's the French uh, and, and and also and, jo support, and the Jordanians, of course, and the Jordanians, and indeed there was other support from other 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 Arab nations who who really have no time for Iran and its adventurism in uh, in, uh, in 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 the Middle East. All of whom, whatever they thought of Israel, and many of them are very deeply opposed to what Israel has been doing in places like Gaza or the West Bank, nonetheless did not want to see Iran to come out as the dominant military power uh, in the Middle East. And I think that calculation is still there. Um, but it's now being changed again because Israel's invasion of Lebanon will now be seen as, saying, as something which they would also deeply oppose. So they may be just balancing slightly in terms of the change of how they how they how they how they approach that. Just just quickly, if I can get your military brain uh, over this, the Americans, of course, have said that they they are going to uh, the full support. Uh, Biden is there for them, but when you're talking a complete battle groups, or, or they they're just not in the right place at the moment. The, yeah. the Harry Truman is heading into the region, but it won't be in the Gibraltar Straits for about 48 hours, let alone where it needs to be. They've got um, their air defence destroyers. A couple of those are around. But actually, when it comes to the big vocals about defending Israel, these battle groups, these things, they're not in the right position yet. No, and I'm sure that's one of the reasons why the, I mean, the Iranians, Iranians track, track military movements, particularly US military movements, as closely as, as everyone else does. Uh, and they, one, of their, one of their sort of tactical considerations in terms of when they launch their attack would almost be tied down to, you know, can we do this before the Americans manage to get majority of their air defence um, systems in, in, in place. And I think that's, you know, that, that, that still places in a, in a position where some of what's going on, there's a degree of signalling going on. So this is war with, war as a message and, you know, a very violent message, but this is war as a message rather than necessarily all out war. Now, we expect Israel to respond and to react to this, and that will be happened. What is unclear is about whether there'll be a, another response from Iran, and then we sit to the circulation, or will will both sides feel that they have um, they have satisfied that honour, so to speak, in terms of what they what they're going to do? Because throughout this entire war, we've had this cycle, but it's been sort of you know, tit for tat and, and, and an element of control and response. I think what people are really worried about is whether that becomes out of control uh, and, and turns into a, into a regional regional conflict where there is no one side who can control it and then you know, goodness knows what's going to happen it burn itself out eventually but it would be a very very ugly and dangerous time simon brilliant to talk to you thank you so much for giving me your time uh, this evening